Now let's move our attention to parameter learning on the Markov random field. We'll consider a Markov random field in a log linear form where C indexes the clicks as we have seen in the previous lecture, the joint probability of the random variable of y. So here y uh, simply represents a set of uh, random variable y1 all the way to yn. And uh, it's conditioned upon a set of unknown random variables uh, of the parameters uh, denoted by theta. And it's given by the exponential of the log uh, linear form term of these uh, click potentials. So this is the uh, feature terms that is uh, from the random variables as well as the set of parameters that uh, within a click of uh, y c and this is uh, given by a linear dot product term and z over here is our partition function we can rewrite this into the scale uh, log likelihood term uh, and th that is given by the uh, log over this uh, joint probability distribution uh, where I over here, I uh, from 1 to n, index the set of observations that we have. And uh, notice that this set of observations over the random variable is also iid. This means that uh, they are independently and identically uh, distributed. And hence, we can take a summation over the log probability of each set of these uh, observations for the random variable. And notice that this, uh, similar to the directed graphical model, this set of random variables in here, in this joint probability distribution, are still uh, dependent on each other, uh, or rather it's, governed, it's still governed by the conditional probability that is encoded in the Markov random field. The only thing that we assume uh, iid or independence would be the number of observations and we normalize this with the number of observations and hence the words are uh, scale long likelihood now we can uh, evaluate this term into this form over here where we simply uh, take the uh, log likelihood from here and plug it inside this equation uh, over here and this is the term that we will get so now the objective is that given this we want to learn uh, the unknown parameters of data that uh, characterizes the joint probability distribution. We'll be given uh, n number of observations of these random variables, uh, and we want to find this unknown set of parameters. Now, since the MRFs are in the exponential family, and we know that this function is convex in data, so what this means is that we have a unique global maxima which we can find using the gradient-based optimizer. And I won't go too much into the detail of the exponential family as well as the convexity, but what this simply means is that uh, we will have, if we plot the, all the, uh, this function over theta, uh, this means that the x-axis here is uh, all the possible values of theta, and I'm going to plot this uh, cost function as a function of theta, I would have a global maxima which I can actually find using gradient based optimizer. This means that I'm going to compute, if I start off with any random initialization of theta, I'm going to uh, compute the gradient and starting from using this gradient, I'm going to do a gradient ascent and I'll be able to reach the uh, always guaranteed to reach the global maxima because there is a unique global maxima. Uh, that is uh, present in the exponential family. Hence, we say that this function, this function of L is convex in data. So now we will take the partial derivative of, of this uh, cost function L over the click potential parameters, which we define as data C. We'll do this over every click potential parameters uh, data C. And we can see that the first term here, it's easy to uh, partially differentiate this over theta c where uh, we will simply uh, ignore this term and this term uh, remains over here since we are uh, partially differentiating with respect to theta c hence this particular term the coefficient terms here uh, remains but uh, the second terms here we can see that it's not so uh, trivial because what happens here is that this log function unlike this the first term here which can be written as the sum over all the respective uh, clicks of C's, 
here the theta all the unknown parameters they are actually dependent on each other where we cannot evaluate it into a sum such that when we take the partial derivative over a data c uh, and we can ignore all the other terms as in uh, this particular summation term here now the partition function is a function which is dependent on all the parameters and hence we have to uh, evaluate this term here and unfortunately uh, there is no closed form terms so the partial derivative of the partition function over theta c can be evaluated to be the expectation of uh, phi c uh, over y condition upon theta and this is uh, evaluated as the expression here where we sum over all possible states of y uh, on the uh, probability the joint distribution over y on the function the click potential of uh, c here and the proof is this where we'll start from the uh, partial derivative of log z uh, over log c and we can see that since it's, this is log it becomes 1 over z multiplied by the partial derivative of z over uh, theta c where z here is simply our partition function defined by the marginalization over all random variables on the uh, exponential of all the click potentials and uh, here this means that the partial derivative of z over theta c would be equals to this particular term here since this is exponential and we're partially differentiating with respect to data c this means that we this term here remains and we will partially differentiate the inner terms of the exponential uh, to get this outer term here and now uh, putting this back into the equation here we will get this term uh, this expression here where uh, we will see that it's 1 over z summation over y uh, theta c or phi c and multiply by the exponential term here so this is uh, given by this uh, partial differentiation over here and now uh, what's interesting is that we can push the partition function into the summation sign because this is a constant this is treated as a constant over the marginalization on all the random variables of y hence uh, we can see that this particular term here becomes nothing but just the joint distribution or over all the random variable condition upon the unknown parameters and hence we will obtain this particular term where we will take the marginalization over uh, the click potential multiplied by the joint probability distribution which is equivalent to the expectation over the click potential uh, on the joint probability distribution hence the gradient of the log likelihood now becomes this term over here where uh, the first term is what we have seen uh, in the in this equation here and the second term which is the partial differentiation over uh, theta c would be given by the expectation term uh, that we have uh, proven in this slide and uh, we will call the first term the clamped term and the second term the unclamped or contrastive term the reason is because uh, the clamped term why is here it's fixed to its observed values because notice that this is a summation over i or, or over yi and this means that uh, we are having n number of observations for the set of random variables in our click potential of c here and the unclamped terms or contrastive terms means that y the random variable y here is a free random variable we are not observing this hence uh, we need to summation this we need to marginalize this over all the possible values of uh, y which we have seen in the previous slide and uh, what's difficult here is that uh, we can see that the unclamped term since it's uh, it involves a marginalization over y and uh, this means that we can only we can no longer compute this in closed form so uh, as what we have seen in the directed graphical model and uh, what we will need to resort to would be a gradient descent uh, method to compute this uh, particular optimization 
and in every step of the gradient that we need to compute, we will it will involve a marginalization over all the random variables of y. This means that this is a inference step over y, all the random variable of y. Hence, the learning of the undirected graphical model of MRF is much slower than the directed graphical model. So here, the each step of this gradient of the log likelihood can be rewritten into this form, where uh, this is simply the expectation over all the random variable. And the first term here, we can rewrite it into a empirical expectation, uh, since this is uh, simply given by the sum of all the uh, click potentials on n number of uh, iid observed random variables. And since we divide it by n, so this means that uh, this is simply the average of this uh, click potential of observations. And this is equivalent to our empirical uh, distribution. And uh, whereas uh, the second term here is the expected uh, distribution over the model uh, distribution. And, and at the optima, the gradient would be equals to zero. This means that we'll equate these two terms over here, the subtraction of these two terms over here, to be equals to zero. Uh, what this means is that at the optimal point, we want the empirical uh, expectation to be equals to the expectation of the model uh, probability distribution. What's difficult here is that we cannot compute this in closed form in terms of the unknown parameter uh, of data because it, this involves or over the marginalization of, of all the random variables. And the solution would be to simply use a gradient-based optimizer. Uh, however, the gradient-based optimizer would also require this particular uh, inference, and uh, which is also the uh, sum over all the states of y. And this uh, means that the gradient becomes intractable to learn. And, but uh, what we can see here is that we can combine approximate inference since exact inference here, meaning that the exact summation marginalization over y is not possible, will resort to uh, approximate inference instead of doing this marginalization using the sum product algorithm exactly, we'll do approximate inference. Uh, in particular, we'll see that uh, we can do the MCMC sampling to replace this particular step. We'll, we'll look at this in more detail in the future uh, lecture. And uh, But here, we'll, I will just give you a flavor of uh, MCMC in order to resolve this exact inference uh, problem here. So we'll use what is called the stochastic gradient descent method where we'll iteratively update the parameter uh, of theta k plus 1 from the previous step uh, of theta k by simply subtracting it with a learning rate eta multiplied by the uh, gradient of this uh, the cost function at time step k. And uh, we'll see that this guy over here, since it involves uh, expectation over this uh, y or the marginalization over all the random variables and it's intractable, we'll make use of the MCMC sampling algorithm to uh, overcome this uh, problem. Here, uh, we'll, since it's a stochastic gradient descent uh, method, we'll uh, split the observed data uh, where yi, where i equals to 1 to n, uh, into mini batches. So each mini batch will have a set of uh, b. Here, b is uh, very much smaller than n. And uh, for each sample in this uh, mini batch, we'll sample, we'll draw a sample of y. Uh, from the posterior distribution condition upon theta k. So theta k here is what we initialize or uh, it's, the, it's the unknown parameter uh, which is uh, from the previous time step k. So in this case here, if k equals to zero, the first time step, we're going to randomly initialize this weight. And then uh, we are going to assume that y uh, follows this distribution taken by uh, k that we have randomly initialized. And we're going to draw a sample from here. So what this means is that uh, this uh, could be some probability distribution of PY condition upon theta K. I'm going to uh, randomly sample based on the probability distribution. So the more 
the higher the probability distribution of this guy, uh, the more likely that I'm going to take samples from this uh, these peaks of uh, the joint of the joint probability distribution, and the lower probability ends means that the lower chance that I'm going to draw samples from here. So we'll look at this in more detail uh, when we look at uh, MCMC sampling on how to draw sample from an, any uh, arbitrary joint probability distribution uh, that looks like this. Now, after we have drawn the distribution from uh, samples of, from the distribution of uh, a Y, we can take the expected value by uh, simply summing up over all the potentials of the samples divided by S samples. And this would be the expected value of this guy uh, over this of this guy over the click potentials. So this is equivalent. This is approximately equivalent to summation of y uh, on the joint probability of y multiplied by the click potential of uh, y over here. And now uh, this would be equivalent uh, approximately the this expectation term. And the next thing that we do would be to for each case. Uh, each training case of i in the mini batch, we will do, uh, we will compute the gradient uh, by uh, taking the difference between the click potential of y i. So this guy here can be directly computed from the sample of y i uh, that we sample from the all the n number of observations in the mini batch, and this is can be directly uh, plugged into the uh, potential, the uh, click potential given by so the, the exact computation of this would be this guy here uh, conditioned upon the theta k that we have uh, ob uh, that we have comp uh, obtained in the previous time step and then we will get the value and plug it inside here and the observation would be simply uh, this guy here also conditioned upon theta k that we have obtained in the uh, previous time step and uh, multiplied by the probability divided by the total number of samples that we have uh, drawn in the this MCMC uh, step over here. And now, uh, in this case, we'll s simply compute uh, GK for each one of the training case. And then uh, here, finally, we will have to compute uh, 1 over phi of YI. So all the sum of uh, YI and then uh, minus away the expectation of uh, over phi of y. So in this case here, we'll have to divide it by the total number of the batch size. Since this summation here is going to uh, repeat this subtraction uh, b number of times. And once we have computed the gradient, we are going to subtract off the previous theta k with the multiplication of the learning rate uh, on the gradient. And we'll do this until convergence. Now in the previous example, we look at how to compute the unknown parameters of a log linear model of an MRF, which is given by uh, this data C transpose of uh, phi of y uh, over here. And we, are, we, we look at how to compute these unknown parameters. But alternative representation here could be the whole click potentials that we are learning. We will simply treat the whole click potential since uh, this guy over here, the click potential, is actually a table over all the random variable in the click. So this means that y1 all the way to y uh, m, for example. So where this set of random variable y1 all the way to uh, y m is actually in the uh, random variable of that click. And here, this phi of c, y c, uh, is simply the all the entries over here, which we simply denote it as a uh, phi c y of c, and we we'll treat this whole term over here as our uh, unknown parameter to be learned. So here, in other words, we can rewrite the log potential, uh, assuming iid of the uh, n number of observations over the set of random variables in the click potentials. Uh, to be uh, this expression over here. So we can see that uh, in this now we no longer write this in this particular form here. 
uh, we simply write it as a product of all the click potentials where bear in mind that each one of these click potential it's actually a table probability distribution table in the case where the random variables are discrete and uh, we will now directly learn this unknown parameters or the unknown click potentials that is represented here and uh, we'll simply uh, evaluate this by pushing the log term into the product term and change it into summation and now uh, we can see that the partition function also becomes a, a subtraction term here and the first term here can be further evaluated into this term here uh, we can see that this simply means that uh, the number of times that yc is being observed uh, here we can uh, re we can rewrite this guy by switching the uh, summation order into a summation of i uh, log of psi c y i c so this term here can be evaluated into the sum of so the summation of c uh, over log of phi c y i uh, equals to so in this case y1 uh, y1 equals to c and plus all the way until log of uh, phi c where y of n this means that my n observation is equals to c over here and uh, we can see that this is simply the uh, the summation over c will remain here but uh, this guy over here all the log terms the summation of all the log terms which is equals to c is simply equivalent to saying that i'm observing the total number of times that the potential is uh, taking the uh, configuration of that particular uh, state in uh, yc in that particular click and uh, this can be taking the partial de derivative of this term here uh, we can simply evaluate the first term here into nc over uh, phi c because we are taking a partial derivative over uh, phi of c so we can see that this term uh, n here is a constant and this can be factorized out log of phi c will simply becomes one of phi c which gives us this term the first term here and now the second term here because it involves a marginalization over all the random variables where all the unknown random variables are now coupled together and uh, hence there is no closed form uh, equation for this so we'll see that uh, the derivative of this log partition function can be evaluated to the this term here uh, we'll start by first writing the partial derivation of log z over uh, the, the phi c the click potential where z here can be simply since this is log z we can simply rewrite this as 1 over z and partial derivative of z over uh, phi of c and now uh, here we let's replace z z since z is the partition function as the marginalization over y on the joint probability distribution of all the click potentials uh, the product of all the click potentials here now since we are looking at the partial derivative of uh, phi c over the marginalization the summation over all configuration of y this means that after the partial derivative only the terms inside here that is uh, dependent on the this particular click would remain all the other uh, terms over this summation would disappear hence we can rewrite this as the marginalization over y uh, delta which is an indicator function uh, this is uh, following the marginalization trick where it will only be one when y takes the state of uh, yc take the particular configuration of yc and uh, hence uh, we can push this partial derivative term into the summation uh, term where this is del over del phi of c here this simply means that after the marginalization we are only considering the terms that are taking the configuration of yc in the in, in this partial derivative here and now uh, what this also means here is that uh, since we take the partial derivative of y uh, of uh, phi c here over the joint probability distribution all the terms inside here that are independent of this phi c will drop out we can drop this partial derivative here and simply write this uh, product term as a product over all the click potential except for the click of c itself and this term over here 
can be simply rewritten as the product of the joint probability distribution over all the click potentials divided by the click potentials that we omitted out which is phi of c uh, in this case here and now we can also push in the partial uh, the partition function into this summation sign to get this term over here and uh, we see that this is nothing but just the joint probability distribution itself over all the random variables and now let's rewrite this term as p of uh, y which is the joint probability distribution and we'll pull this term out the denominator out here because this yc here is taking already taking a set of observations hence it's independent of the marginalization over all the random variables of y now uh, this term here we can simply uh, rewrite it as a marginalization of y except for yc uh, over the joint probability distribution uh, which we can uh, represent uh, as this term here and because we are marginalizing all the other random variables except for yc on the joint probability distribution hence the final uh, distribution here would be only uh, dependent on uh, yc itself and this divided by the uh, click potential of y taking a state of uh, c now putting this term back into the uh, partial derivative that we have uh, seen in the previous slide we'll get this equation here so from here we can see that uh, the first term here is nothing but just the empirical distribution over the uh, yc that we have uh, observed that the random variable taking a configuration of yc the states of yc so what this means is that uh, we are going to check all the uh, number of times in our observation that uh, suppose that we have uh, uh, three random variable y1 y2 and y3 for example and this y1 y2 y3 in this particular click uh, here uh, it's going to take a uh, let's say each one of it it's uh, one out of k uh, but we are going to look at the configuration of c this means that uh, this guy here y1 it's going to take a state of 1 for example and then y2 is taking a state of 0 and y3 taking a state of k for example we are going to count the number of times that this is going to take this configuration and uh, this will go into this particular entry here now we can also move this subtraction term here onto the uh, right side of the equation which we can see that we can uh, formulate this into a, a iterative fixed point equation uh, given by expression here we can see that the next update term of phi c uh, is going to be equals to the previous step uh, of phi c multiplied by the empirical uh, distribution of uh, yc divided by the probability the marginal probability of y condition upon phi t in the previous time step now uh, this gives us the iterative proportional fitting algorithm for Markov random field you can see that uh, over the, all the C number of configurations that we have uh, for a certain uh, click potential we will first start by initializing the potential the entry of the potential for a certain click to be all ones now this is equivalent to uh, let's say we have a probability distribution table or the potential uh, distribution table so this is going to be my phi c which is uh, dependent on the click of y c all the random variables in y c so y, let's say y1 all the way to y m where y c this uh, click potential is uh, dependent on this all these random variable y1 to y m and uh, we will see this over all the possible configurations of uh, y 1 to ym and uh, we can see that all these potential configurations all these possible configurations of uh, y1 to ym will give rise to all the possible uh, configurations of this phi c here so this uh, uh, this means that every one of these has a certain uh, entry here so what this means phi c c is going to be the index of uh, here we are going to abuse the notation by saying that uh, uh, small c here is going to be all my configurations uh, so c equals to 1 c equals to 2 c equals to 3 all the way until 
uh, C equals to capital C here. So all these are my entries in this uh, table here. We're going to initialize it to be all equals to 1. And in the iterative uh, proportional fitting algorithm, we'll first start by initializing all these values into 1. And then the next step that we are going to do is that we repeat this until convergence. But for each one of the entries in my uh, probability table or in my potential function table, I'm going to first compute the marginalization over my joint uh, probability distribution. And this would be simply the marginal probability of my uh, YC here. Condition upon the potential uh, values, the unknown par parameters of phi, uh, which are all the entries in this click uh, potential. So what this means is that now uh, I'm going to do the marginalization over all the Y except for YC on my joint probability distribution here which is actually given by my uh, click potentials, the product of all the click potentials over, uh, the, all, over all the random variables of Y. So in this case here, I'm going to marginalize all the unwanted var uh, random variables in th that does not belong to this particular uh, click that I'm looking at right now. And uh, after marginalization, I'm going to compute the probability distribution of this uh, marginal probability distribution over YC uh, from the values that I have initialized earlier. And then the next step uh, is that I'm going to compute the empirical probability of the current click based on the observations of the uh, random variables uh, that I have for this particular uh, click here in this configuration. So as I mentioned earlier, so there are many configurations here over this particular click. So suppose that I'm looking at uh, the third state over here, for example. I'm looking at the third state over here. I'm going to count from all my observations of Y1 to Yn number of uh, random variables. So this is the full set of random variables. I'm going to count in these uh, observations over here how many times the configuration of Y1 to Ym uh, that is in my click take this particular state here. And that would go into the computation of the empirical uh, probability uh, uh, distribution. So this is simply given by this guy over here. The number of times where y takes the particular state divided by the total number of observations. And once I'm done with this, I'll take the uh, proportion of these two probability, multiply by the previous state of uh, uh, phi of c, which is uh, in the first step is initialized to uh, 1. And I'm going to do this repeatedly until I see no difference in the previous time step and the current time step in the update of uh, phi c. And that means that I have reached convergence. So we can also do a maximum a posterior to learn the unknown parameters in the undirected graphical model of uh, Markov random field, where we simply add an additional prior term here. So in this case, we'll simply use a Gaussian prior over the unknown parameters, uh, where it's given by a uh, hyperparameters mu and sigma here, where we can simply perform the same operation by partially differentiating this and uh, this whole term over here with respect to the likelihood as well as the prior term. Now, lastly, let's look at the parameter learning for the conditional random field. We'll consider a conditional random field in the log linear term, which is given by this expression over here, where now we can see that uh, as defined in the previous lectures, the difference between a conditional random field and a Markov random field is that now the features that we are looking at, it's dependent on the set of inputs as well as the outputs. And as well as the partition function is now dependent on the set of inputs x and a set of uh, unknown parameters w here. Here, we say that uh, phi of c is the feature vector derived from the global inputs x and the local set of labels uh, yc. And what this means is that learning these unknown parameters wc means that we need a set of uh, label input and output data sets of x and y. Here we can modify the gradient based optimization of the Markov random fields to the conditional random field where the scaled log likelihood becomes uh, this term over here. 
and where we will simply uh, take the log of the joint distribution in the log linear form as shown by this expression here. And the gradient now becomes uh, taking the partial derivative of L uh, with respect to WC, which is the uh, unknown parameter of the, uh, of the click C, it will be equals to this expression here. Now what we can see is that uh, the expectation or the partial deriv derivative of the uh, log of the partition function can no longer be taken out of the uh, submission term here. And we see that the consequence of this is that uh, we will end up with an even slower learning uh, for uh, the conditional random view. But again, uh, we have to evaluate the uh, partial derivative of the first term here with respect to WC. And we can see that uh, since this is just a product or a dot product of W and phi C, uh, we will end up with uh, phi C over here since it's a partial derivative of over WC. Now, uh, the second term over here to take uh, del over uh, this log function, partition function over uh, WC will end up to be the feature uh, vector over phi of C. And notice that the proof to this uh, partial derivative would be the same as what we have seen for the Markov random view over the log partition function. And now, uh, one problem here is that we can see that since this uh, expectation is dependent on xi, uh, which is from all the observations, we can no longer uh, pull this out from the submission term. And uh, now, this means that what this means is that we have to do the expectation term, which is a marginalization over y, or the random variable y, at every gradient step that we need to compute. And this becomes O n times slower than the Markov random field, because in that case, we can pull it out of the summation term, and we only need to compute it, uh, this marginalization over every uh, epoch that we are uh, computing in the stochastic gradient descent. But in this case, every gradient that we compute, we have to compute the marginalization, and this becomes O n times uh, slower. And here's the stochastic gradient descent to learn the unknown parameters in the conditional random field. We'll have two inputs here. Uh, t, which is the number of iterations, as well as the learning rate, sequence of learning rate. So this can be all set to be the same. So we'll have a general eta for the uh, all the learning rates. And the outputs here would be the learned uh, weight uh, vectors, which is our learned unknown parameters. And we'll first initialize the uh, parameters to be all zero. And then we'll update this over uh, t number of steps. The first step that we do here would be in order to mitigate the computation of the uh, marginalization over y for all the gradient steps. We will first uh, sample a small subset of data, often one to three elements from the larger data of all the inputs and outputs uh, observations that we have, a pair of input and outputs, x and, meaning x and y uh, that we have from the data set. And then the next thing that we do would be to compute the gradient approximation. So this gradient approximation would be given by the uh, equation here. This guy over here, we have to compute it for all the samples that we have uh, sampled uh, in, the pre, uh, in, in, this, in this particular step here. So instead of uh, using all the n number of observations, we are going to uh, do d prime where we keep this uh, total number of samples here to be small. So instead of doing the marginalization over all the random variables of y, we are going to use the same trick of um, MCMC sampling. This means that I'm going to sample, I'm going to draw samples from this distribution here uh, and uh, to compute the expectation over these uh, samples. And this will give me the approximation to the expectation of this uh, phi c over the joint probability distribution. And the exact equation is given by this expression here. So once we have computed the uh, gradient, we will multiply it by the learning rate and add it to the current uh, weights or unknown parameters and update it to the next step. 
and we'll do this until we have exhausted all the t uh, iterations so we can also do a maxima a posterior uh, for the unknown parameters in the crf by simply adding a prior uh, to the unknown parameters where we will also use a gaussian prior uh, in in this case here so in summary we have looked at how to compute the unknown parameters of discrete continuous uh, directed graphical model using the maximal likelihood estimation as well as the maximal a posterior we have also looked at how to compute the unknown parameters of mrfs using stochastic maximal likelihood as well as iterative proportional fitting finally we have looked at how to compute the unknown parameters of a conditional random field using stochastic gradient descent